Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. And I started the new year off right. I gave myself a little challenge to paint one miniature a day for seven days. Now that's not a crazy challenge. I just did a video showing off every single model I painted last year and it was a lot of models. Well over one miniature a day. It was more like a miniature and a half every single day because I often paint armies and squads. And so I get a lot of painting done. But part of the challenge was one model a day. So I only had that one miniature to work with and I could spend as long or as little as I wanted on it and I had to just work on that one model. And I feel like I learned a lot. The first model I painted while watching Survivor Man Bigfoot was Bosk, the famous Trandoshan bounty hunter for Star Wars Legion. This is the model that kicked it all off. I was painting this miniature and I really, really, really liked how it turned out. And it was fun to just pour time into one figure. I mean, this is an operative for Star Wars Legion, so there's there's not a squad of Bosks. It was just one character. And it really got me thinking like, well, what if I really focused and paid attention and tried really hard on single minis? Like how good can I get each one to look? And I loved Bosk. It was also fun to be watching a Bigfoot show while painting like a dragon person. Like, I don't know, it just, it felt right. You know, you ever have those moments where everything just, the stars kind of align and you just have a great time. I had a great time painting Bosk. I did lots and lots of Army Painter speed paint and then layering more colors on top. And part of it is that this is just an excellent miniature. Uh, and, and part of it is that it's a Star Wars miniature. And Star Wars is great for minis because the people who design characters for Star Wars do a really good job of having their characters be instantly recognizable. I mean, Bosk was a character from a movie first. We all remember in Empire Strikes Back, his famous line, a classic, and but it's instantly recognizable. And so when these characters are miniaturized, they just work really, really good. The color selection, the, the shapes and sizes, the silhouettes, it's really nice. Sometimes with Games Workshop minis or any mini miniatures that are designed to be miniatures first, I feel like they sometimes lack a little something. You can often bring that something back with good color selection or like a good idea of color theory. But man, do the Star Wars characters really, really paint up nice. And I decided that this seven day challenge was going to be for Star Wars Legion. I also have a huge Star Wars Legion pile of shame that I really, really, really need to get through. So Bosk was number one and I really had a good time painting him. So I decided to keep that ball rolling and I went with my Imperial Operatives box and I painted a Stormtrooper Captain. I thought I caught Star Wars Legion in a little bit of a, a Star Wars lore fail because I thought that they painted their Imperial Captain gray because those are the usual captains that we see like on Death Stars or on Star Destroyers, but those are actually fleet captains and the Stormtrooper captains wear black clothing, but they were right. They painted theirs black and I painted mine black. And this is an, a very, very simple miniature that I painted for about three hours. And it black is a really, really hard color to pull off. And I think it looks fine, but I, I think I learned something. And that is speed paint often does a better job of shading and highlighting than I do. Or, I mean, really it was three hours of painting her clothing. I did, I did Army Painter speed paint black over everything. And then I made, 50 shades of gray on my palette. And then I carefully painted over everything, adding in highlights and shadows. And I don't know if I needed to. I wish I had a picture of just the speed paints because if you held them both up, it would probably be a coin toss, which one looks better. I think that I did a good job of adding highlights and shadows, but it does look a little cartoony and a little hokey. And it took such a long time that I don't know if it was really worth it. it. It was not easy to do. It was pretty tricky. It, I went back and forth between colors a lot. I mean, it's always a bad sign when the paints on your wet palette have almost dried and been used up and you're only painting one tiny, tiny little character. But yeah, I'm happy with how this miniature turned out, but I was wondering, did I use my time effectively? Did I use all of my paint brushing effectively? I don't think that I did on this miniature. And so the next night, I painted this Nemoidian. This character is from the Vital Assets expansion for Star Wars Legion, which is some 
extra rules so that you can play have these different game modes and one of those is protecting the vital asset this is a Nemoidian. you might think that it is viceroy newt gunray but it is actually not viceroy newt gunray it is his toady little sidekick rune hako and so for this character i very carefully painted his face and his hands but his entire robe is just army painter speed paint purple that's all it is i think it looks really really good and i mean it, it took no time because it's just one coat of paint so i think i'm i think i'm learning a little bit i also put him on a clear plastic base because this is really more of an objective marker than an actual character and so i thought i, I wanted to try it out and so i put on the clear plastic clear plastic base and doesn't it look kind of smart like i think it looks really really good I love basing and I love to try to do a really good job with basing. I really went out of my way on Bosk with his little his little piece of rock that he's standing on, which is actually cork because I'm trying out some new cork products I bought. But th there is something nice and simple and clean with the clear bases. I definitely want to try some more fun things with clear bases. I'm uh, planning on starting a Caradron's Overlord army for Age of Sigmar, and I'm thinking about having all of them on clear bases and then Fancying them up a little bit with like some cotton to make it look like clouds because they float through the clouds. But yeah, clear bases. This guy painted up in about an hour and I think he's a really, really good hour. Once again, really good model, really good Star Wars model. His bright neon face really glows, especially in front of that dark, dark purple. But I did do a Zenithal Prime and then a little bit of value sketching uh, on his shoulders and on his head. And I think that that value sketch does show through a little bit underneath the speed paint. And it all just sort of works. I think if I did the exact same thing for this Stormtrooper Captain, I would be just as satisfied with this model. And I could have watched a movie or done something else with my evening. But yeah, Rune Hako for Star Wars Legion. After that, I needed to get the Vital Assets box finished, so I painted up the other, the good guy Vital Asset that came in that box, Ryu Chuchi, the blue senator from that really, really good episode of Clone Wars. I think it's late in season one. I think it's an episode called Trespass, but it's a really, really good episode of Clone Wars. And this, once again, phenomenal mini. This one, I couldn't pull off all the same things that I could on these really simple models because she is not simple. She has lots of really funky, funky clothing. So this was probably another three hour paint job, but I really like how it turned out. And I think I, I sometimes get decision paralysis, like, oh gosh, what should I do tonight? I have a little bit of time. Should I try to get a ton of stuff done for my Sylvaneth army? Should I try to get a ton of stuff done for my Conquest Last Argument of Kings stuff? Should I work on my endless Black Templars? Like I always want to get a ton of stuff done because that makes it feel like I really uh, had a lot of value for my time. But because I was inside of this challenge. This is the only miniature I get to paint today. And so I decided, you know what? I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna do my best. And I really like how it turned out. This model is once again, I picked a speed paint and I painted every part of the miniature with speed paints. And then uh, and then I just got to decide what things did I want to perfect and which things did I wanna leave alone. And it's a really, really nice way of painting because your model is sort of done once you get those speed paint colors on because the model looks pretty good. And you, if you wanted to, you could stop right there and call it a day. But then I was like, well, I want to do a little non-metallic metal on her headdress. I really want to work on getting getting her cheeks to glow a pale blue. I really want to make sure that all of her little jewelries are bright, bright yellow. And I could have stopped at any time. And so that makes that style of painting. I suppose it would be slap chop plus where you slap chop and then you chop some more but i really like how this miniature turned out it was really fun to paint a very small miniature which also helped because even though i spent a long time on this miniature each individual thing took a relatively short amount of time i mean her face probably took 30 minutes which is pretty good for trying really really hard on a face and again really smart looking clean plastic base that is getting fingerprints all over it okay i'm starting to see some downsides but after that, I was feeling really, really jazzed and I had some droid models. And so I painted this Imperial Astromech and I keep fawning over how great the Star Wars Legion miniatures are. This one is a little bit rough. It's an Astromech droid, an Imperial Astromech droid, but I feel like the details are so embossed and so exaggerated that it actually made this model fairly hard to paint. 
I mean, clearly it's, it's evil R2-D2 is what this model is. But R2 is pretty flat when you really look at him. Like, he's made up of a bunch of different little pieces, but it's all, he's just a trash can. But this guy, every single little detail on his head and on his chest is so tall and standing so proud that I really had to be careful. And washes and contrast paint did a little bit more than I wanted it to do. Uh, he's pretty contrasty and I'm happy with how he turned out. But this R2-D2 probably took two and a half hours. Like this is not a fast paint job and it really should have been. If his details were a lot more shallow, just a wash probably would have made it look really, really good. But I had to highlight in between and around all of these tall panels. I mean, it's almost like he's got like a bunch of trays, like in your kitchen, the tray that you keep all of your knives and silverware in. That's basically what this guy is. And you're trying to paint inside of those little cups and receptacles. It was actually really tricky. But apart from crapping on this model, I do really like how it turned out. And it was really fun. A nice, simple, evil R2-D2. I was and I felt really good because every single day I had a finished miniature that I could put on the shelf and admire. And I have a spreadsheet of every model that I paint so that I can actually keep track of some things. And it was felt really good every night to just open up that little page and add, you know, Star Wars Legion astromech droid. One miniature, put in the date, it felt really, really good. And yeah, good old astromech droid. But I actually had another astromech droid because two of them come in that same box. And this is the Imperial Medical Droid. And this model was a really, really quick paint job. Mostly because it's just black gray. So Army Painter Speed Paint black gray on everything. But I did do some fun. I painted the Imperial logo on its head. And I didn't paint that. Well, I mean, I technically did paint it. I had a tiny, tiny, itty bitty Imperial stencil from a company called Home Hobby and Hyperspace over on Etsy. And I put that on there and then I ever so carefully airbrushed on the red. It was it was easier to do than freehanding it for sure. But I think when you get really, really, really small like that, you don't want to put it on a round surface like the top of this head or like a, a Space Marine shoulder pad. It was tricky to do and I, I it definitely worked, but I did have to do a fair bit of repair work to make sure that everything was exactly how it should be. But other than that, it was a really, really fun paint job. I did a little dry brushing, which I am ever so slowly getting better at doing. But, you know, because I only had this one model to paint that night, I was like, you know what? Let's just try to dry brush. I have a really hard time with dry brushing, getting the moisture ratio just right on my paintbrush because if you have just a tiny bit of too much water on your paintbrush, it's just bleh, you're just painting a big stripe of paint. And if you have just a little tiny bit too little moisture on your paintbrush, the paint dries in the paintbrush and you get just this dusty chalky look, which is fine for like bases. I mean, I dry brush all the time, but usually it's that chalky dry dry brushing. But I would I would get my dry brush loaded up with paint, make sure the moisture was exactly how I thought it should be. And then I would test it out. And if it if my test was wrong, I would clean the whole dry brush off, load it up with paint again and try again. And so this this model took a long time to paint just because I was forcing myself to dry brush correctly. And I don't think I would have dry brushed correctly if I decided, oh, I'm going to paint all of the vital assets miniatures tonight. And I have to do that. But because I only had this one single miniature, I took the time and it turned out very nice because of it. I also got to use a little bit of fluorescent orange paint on his eyes. And I really, really like it. It's a nice focal point to an otherwise kind of dour and dark miniature. But I like how it turned out a lot. And again, this was day six. I was really, really happy with my progress so far in the year 2023. And so I went and I grabbed the model that I bought Man, six months ago, seven months ago, a model that I immediately took home, I put it all together and then I put it away because I was terrified of painting this miniature. I finally painted Sabine Wren. Sabine Wren from Star Wars Rebels. Not, not my favorite Star Wars show, but some of the characters are really cool. Sabine Wren, if you've ever seen Star Wars Rebels, the most obnoxious color scheme probably in all of Star Wars. She's an artiste, and so she has all of this free handing stuff all over her armor. 
This was like a six or seven hour paint job. And this model is like an inch tall. It's an incredibly small model, but it I, I, I said I was gonna paint a miniature every single day. It's day seven. I can't call it quits and not finish. I have to get this miniature done. And so I sat down and I did it. And you know what? It turned out really, really nice. And now I have Sabine Wren as an operative for my Star Wars Rebels army. And I'm really excited to get to play with her in game. But man, this was an absolute lesson in free handing. And it's a good lesson. It's always good to practice and to do more things. And that's really what all of these miniatures were, was practice. I mean, I also got to get all my toys done and I'm really happy, but I got to practice painting. And that was what I really, really liked. Again, all of these models were speed paint and then more paint applied on top. To the point where I don't know if there's any bare speed paint left on this miniature because I just decided to go in and fix and perfect every single thing on the model, probably on the base. There's a fair bit of just regular old speed paint showing, but I really, really like how it turned out. And it was, it wasn't like a miserable six hours of painting. I was enjoying it because Every single new thing on this miniature was a new challenge. Her checker pad shoulder, her shoulder that has like a little picture of an owl on it, like a tiny picture of an owl on a shoulder pad that's the size of like the head of a pin, her blue hair that turns to like um, to like a, a light green hair, her backpack that has wings painted on it, her helmet, which has these weird kind of bird's wings with shapes inside of the bird's wings. I totally, as soon as I started painting it, I totally knew why I set this model off and because I knew it was going to be an investment to actually get this miniature painted up. But I'm really, really glad that I did. And I don't know if I would have picked this model. Once I painted Bosk, I kind of knew like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna paint Star Wars Legion models every night this week. But this was not part of the plan at the start of that week. But after getting this whole little group of this little gaggle of, ga of gals ready to go, then I was like, you know what? You know what it's time for? I walked over to my Star Wars Legion bin, cracked it open, and I dug out Sabine Ren and I'm like, I am, I am riding high off of the energy of finishing this project. And so now it's time for Sabine Ren. And I've painted it and I'm very, very happy. I got to try out some new things. Actually on all of these minis that have painted bases, I leave the base rims of my Star Wars Legion models unpainted because I kind of like the colors that the company chose. Every different faction has different colored bases. And so I actually used liquid masking. It's like this weird, super smelly liquid rubber. And I ruined a brush. I actually have a brush dedicated for it now. And so anytime I have to use this stuff, I'm gonna use that paintbrush. But I just, you just paint it on, you let it dry. And then it's really, really satisfying to like roll it off when it's done and it and it's perfect. It leaves no paint is sneaking underneath. Like sometimes when I use masking tape and I'm a little bit sloppy and I let the paint be really watery, sometimes that paint will seep underneath the tape. But the masking, the masking fluid, it is rubber glued onto wherever you brush it. And so I probably could also would be a fun experiment to try maybe doing a model with a lot of airbrushing and to paint the model put on some masking fluid, airbrush more on the model, put on masking fluid, airbrush more on the model, and then pull out that masking off and see what that leaves me. Because that could be a really fun way to paint. And I would love to give it a try. But yeah, Sabine Wren. Seven days of painting, seven miniatures done. And it's not amazing. Like I could have probably just one day this week painted up 10 Space Marines and had more physical models done than this but I tried really hard on these miniatures. I think they look a step above my usual painting. And I mean, they're all Star Wars. I absolutely love them. I am really, really satisfied with my results. I have stopped. I have stopped painting a miniature every single night. I still paint basically every single night, but I'm just trying to get some, some of the games that I'm actually playing a lot of finished first. But it was a really nice way to get the year started. I was riding really high off of Looking at the giant sea of miniatures that I painted, having put all the miniatures I painted last year on the table and talked about them. And so I wanted to make sure that the next time I do that at the end of this year, I, I can be like, I had a great start to this year because I painted every single night and I have seven lovely models to show for it. If any of you out there are looking for a fun hobby challenge, or you're maybe in a little bit of a painting rut, or you just want to improve your painting, 
I would absolutely challenge you, find seven miniatures, maybe different types of miniatures, maybe something that you don't usually paint or models that are a little bit more detailed that use different colors that you're not used to, and just give each one maximum effort. And I guarantee at the end of that project, you will be very jazzed at your results and you will have improved your painting tremendously. Nothing gets you better quicker than painting random stuff that takes you out of your elements and forces you to try new things. And if you take me up on this challenge to paint seven miniatures for seven days, please post those minis on our Discord linked in the description below. I would love to take a look at them. And you know what else I love to look at? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have new terrain packs available monthly. This month, we have the Dark Factorum, a grim, dark, bloody factory full of lovely details and super modular that comes in 75 components. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give them some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. We host painting guide PDFs, live Discord hangouts, and we have a new tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines so you can join the Legion. I now have seven more Star Wars figures all painted up, which means that my pile of shame is probably only like 70 more figures. So I am making some great progress.